Well, we know that, um, uh, first of all, uh, the therapy is depending on, or the success of the therapy is not only depending on a very accurate placement of the electrode, but also on refined stimulation settings. And um, uh, finding the optimal stimulation settings in a given patient and balancing it with medication is currently, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult process that requires um, expert knowledge. And this knowledge is not uh, widely available uh, amongst neurologists. So one, advantage, one advance that we see in the future is the use of um, artificial intelligence and digital methods to create expert systems that help in this uh, very tedious uh, programming process and make it more reliable and also faster uh, to come to optimal solutions for individual and given patients. And uh, these kind of expert systems, usually they are supported um, by imaging um, are currently underway. There are already some commercial uh, solutions that are rapidly advancing. This is one big area of advancement in Parkinson's disease. The other one is um, based on the fact that um, Parkinson's symptoms are not stationary, they fluctuate. And they also tend to fluctuate with um, uh, the um, uh, motor behavior of patients, the motor states, and also general states such as emotional states or also sleep states. Uh, so they fluctuate uh, throughout the day markedly. And uh, the stimulation that we currently apply is continuous. Uh, so one further advancement will be that one can sense to a certain extent the state of the brain and also of the patient, the behavioral state, and then adapt stimulation accordingly. And this is uh, so-called closed loop neurostimulation. And there is now a new commercial uh, DBS device with sensing capability. And uh, this may in the very near future allow to sense brain states and to adapt stimulation accordingly so that unnecessary overstimulation is being avoided.